Today, we're going to talk about six things men notice first in a woman and they find it massively attractive. And I just want to share with you, I've shot this video before and I've seen this title on many of my contemporaries. So I'm revisiting this again because I think it's a rather important conversation to have. See, in our current dating environment, we've been adopted to believe that chemistry equals relationship success. And when have two people have chemistry in the early stages of dating, they oftentimes begin the process of getting to know one another at hopefully a friendship-based level. The problem is that our current model are of a tr entertainment and romance-based dating sets men and women up for failure because they put the romance and the chemistry and the intensity of physical connection way in front of building the true friendship with one another. And this is what's oftentimes missing in the process. Let me repeat that, building the true friendship with one another because our current dating environment is hyper-focused on entertaining each other and romancing each other instead of approaching it from a conscious, intentional, heart-centered way of actually determining compatibility with one another. Let me repeat that, getting to know each other from a perspective of compatibility. See, most humans don't really know how to get to know another human being at a deep heart-centered level. And so what happens is our current dating environment is hyper-focused on what people notice first, but from a superficial perspective, and I'm actually going to go underneath the surface today talking about what emotionally healthy men notice first in a relationship. Now, did you hear me say emotionally healthy men? See, I believe the vast majority of human beings in the dating marketplace today are rather emotionally wounded. They have childhood wounds and adult traumas, and they haven't healed from those childhood wounds and adult traumas to actually build, to create the necessary skills to actually navigate a healthy, happy relationship in the future. See, most human beings have weak emotional maturity and weak relationship skills. So part of the process to determine if someone's emotionally available, emotionally capable of leaning into a relationship is asking those deeper questions. But what an emotionally person, emotionally mature person does is they trust their inner voice. They trust their inner guide. And these six things I'm about to share with you is what comes up early on to determine if you're actually capable, men or women. And what I'm about to share is true for men and women. So even though it's six things men notice first that find massively attractive, it's the six things women notice first and they find it massively attractive in men. So first, we have to remember that the physical component of a relationship is just one aspect of a relationship. But what's more important, I believe, is the energetics of a person, the energetics of a person. And that's what we're going to lean into today. So the first energetic is the vibe you're putting out. What is the vibe you're putting out? You know, it's interesting. Um, when I was in my early stage of dating after my divorce, I noticed a pattern with so many women, and this is true. Men exhibit this as well. But on a date, I could be on a date with a woman sitting right across from her. And I could see every man that's ever hurt her standing right behind her. She literally had walls up. She, they literally had walls up. And you could see everybody that hurt them. Now, obviously, I'm talking about this from a metaphor, but it came out in the way she communicated about herself. It was the way she communicated. You could feel the walls up. Men, ladies, you've experienced this with men. You've experienced men. You could feel their walls up. Well, we men can feel your walls up as well. And I know many of you have been told to protect your heart. We have to protect our heart. We have to put armor up. We have to put walls up. It's those walls, that vibe is what we notice first. And that's not very attractive. So you know what's attractive in its stead? Is having an open heart, having a receptive heart, to, be, to have beginner's mind, not to blame the past relationships 
for this new person you're meeting. And this isn't easy. This work of having an open heart is not for the faint of heart. It oftentimes requires deep healing of our past relationships, particularly those treasured relationships, not those contentious relationship. Contentious relationship is what we're going to talk about uh, next. But having that, looking at your past relationships and say, what positive things did I learn about myself? How have I healed from this relationship? What was good about this relationship? And what am I most grateful for about my past relationships? When you can answer those four questions from a real heart-centered place, you become more magnetic attractor for what you want. It's really the essence of self-love. This is my book called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. I invite you all to check it out. There's links below to get a copy of the books I recommend. Number two, we noticed ownership of your problems. You know, we are, we are swimming in a sea of victim consciousness. Ownership of your problems, ownership of what, of your past relationship. We have a very victim mentality of victim consciousness. And emotionally healthy men observe this from women. And we don't find that very attractive. What we find attractive is victor consciousness. Those that aren't complaining about their problems. They're not revisiting their past relationships from a victim perspective. They take ownership. They have victor consciousness. Remember I said earlier, you could see every man that ever hurt her. I've had that happen. It's because she was operating from a complaining victim consciousness about the dating process. Look, I get the dating process sucks. Okay, I get it. It sucks, but we can we can also look at look for the pony in the in the crap. We can look for that. We can start saying it's raining great men, it's raining great women, it's raining great men, it's raining great men women. We can change the story. We can change the narrative because all of this is what's noticed very early on. And just remember this, ladies. You have to understand when you've heard the story, men are on the hunt and men love the chase. Just remember, we're not going around going, I'm hunting a relationship. I'm hunting a relationship. Men are hunting sex. The way they operate prior to sex might seem, as I said earlier, it's attraction and romance based way of dating to get you in your pants. The way you're going to shift this narrative is start operating from a conscious, intentional, heart-centered way. If you haven't read the book, If the Buddha Dated, If the Buddha Dated, I highly recommend getting this book. All the books I recommend are listed below. Also, I recommend getting the book. I just, just starting to read this book. It's called Eight Rules of Love by Jay Shetty, How to Find, Keep, and Let Love In. Let it, wait, what's it say? Let it go. Okay, excuse me. All right. I highly recommend checking these books so we can start moving to that victor consciousness and let go of that victim or victor consciousness and let go of that victim narrative. Number three, you're fully present. I've observed so many women that are so stuck in the past or they're so focused on the future instead of being actually present with another human being to what's happening in the moment. I think, you know, the, I'm, the book, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle is all about learning presence to heal the past and not create stories about the future. And sometimes they're one in the same. To be fully present, to really be present to another human being, to do active listening, to acknowledge what another person says from a truly present space. This, this takes work. Our, our minds have a habit of going, do, do you realize that the average human has somewhere between 15,000 and 60,000 thoughts a day? 90% of those thoughts are negative 
And of those 90%, 90% of those are reoccurring thoughts. They're thoughts over and over and over again. And when you're doing that, when you're revisiting the past, when you're focused on the future and you're revisiting the past and focusing on the future, it's difficult to be present to another human being. And human beings are thirsty for being with people who are present, at least those emotionally mature, healthy men and women. So number three, being present. Number four, soft eyes and a radiant smile, or excuse me, soft eyes, nice smile, radiance. I once went on a date with a woman and while she was walking in to the restaurant, I swear to God, she had resting bitch face. Excuse me if I've offended anyone, but she literally had such a sour puss, puss, puss look. Now, if she was having a bad day, I can certainly understand that, but she just, that was the way she operated. Her eyes weren't soft, they were hard, and her smile was really tough. And I, see, by the way, I see this on dating apps. I see so many women that lack true radiance. It's one of the things we men notice first, and we are massively attracted to radiance. I get compliments on my dating profile all the time because it, it, it exudes radiance. It exudes my inner soul. But if we have walls up, if we have victim consciousness, we're not going to be exuding that radiance with a soft eyes and a nice smile. Our smile is what invites us in. <laughs> By the way, the trick to photographing a great smile is to chuckle when the, when someone's taking a picture. Because <laughs> it, it's, 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 it's an inner, you know, levity, if you will. So if you want to shift that in your photographs, to start to chuckle. It feels awkward as hell, but my natural smile is this. <laughs> you see the difference? All right, soft eyes, nice smile. Number five, we notice who your friends are and we notice your lifestyle. We notice who your friends are and who your lifestyle is. You know, I see dating profiles where I see a lot of women in party mode with their friends and their bikinis are out and their boobs are hanging. And, you know, that's not my lifestyle. You know, that doesn't attract me in. But for some men who are who are egoic based, who are visually based, who are sexually based, that might attract them in. But your friends and your lifestyle, who you associate with, are things that we notice. Certainly, how you treat your friends, how your friends treat you. Now, most of us are blessed with good people in our lives, but how you operate in your lifestyle can directly affect how someone might be attracted to you. And by the way, you ladies notice the same thing about men. I've heard the same issue from women, that they don't find the men attractive because who they associate with, who that person's lifestyle is. And so these are just things we notice, and I'm just drawing attention to what's attractive and what's not attractive. And I'm inviting you all to really take a good look at your lives from how you show up, how you present yourself, whether we like it or not. Dating is a marketing process. I had, um, where's her book? Um, I had Demona Hoffman in. Uh, recently on a video. She wrote the book, F the Fairy Tale. And she talks about whether we like it or not, when we put our present present ourselves, we are marketing ourselves, whether we like it or not. But Jonathan, I shouldn't have to market myself. Someone should just love me for who I am. Well, if we don't know who you are, how can we love you for who you are? We this Whether we like it or not, we, there we, are, we are surrounded by so many people. You have to learn how to make yourself stand out. How can someone see who I am? And this is why I invite the deep inner work so you can stand out. I jokingly say it's the hunger games out there and doing this work will forever put the odds in your favor. And lastly, number six, verbal communication, active listening, being curious, and most importantly, appreciating. I would say that men, 
one of their greatest complaints with women, and I hear the same thing from women as well, is a lack of appreciation, a lack of verbal communication, active listening. See, oftentimes men and women operate on what they're going to say next instead of listening to a person. What humans oftentimes do is they're in righteous behavior. I'm right and you're wrong. Verbal expression of appreciation seems to be so lacking. One of the complaints I've heard from divorced men repeatedly is they didn't feel appreciated. And certainly women have said the exact same thing. It's one of the number one complaints from couples is they didn't feel appreciated by their partner. We take each other for granted. And it requires conscious, active listening skills, being curious about another person. Asking about what's going on on their inner life, inner life, folks. The transactional way of relationships, when we were on a survival-based way of living, doesn't exist anymore. Just leaning into one love language isn't enough. Acts of service. I'm here to encourage of the emotional love language, of verbal communicating, actively listening, being curious, and most importantly, expressing appreciation for your partner on a regular basis. In fact, I invite you all before you go to bed with a partner, before each one of you goes to bed, is share five things you appreciate about one another every single night. Make that a habit, whether you're sleeping in the same bed or getting on the telephone before you go to bed. Share five things you appreciate. And by the way, people who are not appreciative will dismiss this because they lack the capacity to lean in, whether it's a man or a woman. So I invite you to look at these six things. First off, pay attention if you have walls up. Tear down those walls. Number two, have victor consciousness. Number three, be fully present. Number four, soft eyes and a nice smile demonstrates radiance. And just remember how your lifestyle is. Make it open and inviting for someone to lean in so you can blend lives with one another. And as I said earlier, this is true for men and women alike. And lastly, good, solid verbal communication skills, which includes active listening, being curious, and most important, being appreciated, appreciative of one another. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Post a comment below. I do my best to read them all in the first 24 hours. As always, if you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if you want to connect with me directly in the show notes in the first comment, there's a link to schedule a discovery call with me. There's a link to join my group called Midlife Love Mastery. There's a link to follow me on Instagram to get the books I recommend and get my dating vows and join my mailing list, all listed below. All right, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.